Okay, thank you so much for choosing to listen to Bayloric TV Boxing Channel's post-fight video of David Hay versus Mark Demore. Yep, it was Hay Day. In some people's eyes, it was payday for David Hay. And for others, it was fast day for David Hay. And for others, it was, hey, it's glad to ha we're glad to have you back, David. For me, if you want to hear my post-fight video, that's what you're here to hear. Um, I did say that before the fight, the concern for Mark Demore was he'd already been KO'd by a guy by the name of Digger in a round. And my concern for, for, for Mark Demore, or the people who thought Mark Demore could win this fight or stick around more than more four or five rounds, was the fact that Demore had got chinned by somebody that nobody had heard of. And then we all knew that David Hay, the last thing that you lose is a punch, punch power. And David Hay has got tremendous punch power. Um... Some positives. David Hay actually got to the ring. He actually fought um, to come back for three and a half years. Uh, if he was really injured, like people, he said he was injured, then it's a great to have come back from injury and to be back in the ring and done the business. So, you know, the opposition in Mark Demore, the dominator already had been dominated, although David was telling everybody, that, you know, Demore hadn't been dominated. He was, he had been dominated in a round. So, David Hay went in there. And Mark Demore, before the fight, did everything opposite to what he said he was doing. He said he's going to come and have a fight. He said he couldn't box from the outside. He knew he had to take it to David Hay. And he was going to come and put his head down and have a go. But the first 10 seconds, Demore steps onto the back foot and tries to box David Hay. With shorter arms than Hay. And with limited boxing ability and, you know, boxing, his footwork was like he was treading in cement. Dumori, with a lack of defense as well, was like a walking punch bag for David Hay. David Hay coming into the ring, uh, uh, a trim, well, trim or heavier, um, 17 pounds heavier. David did look a little slower. Of course he would look slower because he's put 17 pounds on. And then he hit Demore. Demore's head was in the air. Typical David Hay. Throw a jab. Drop back. Over the top. Right hand over the top. Bam. Demore's over on the canvas. And Demore is, um, you know, knocked out. That's typical David Hay business there. And we know that he's got the power. Let's not get excited here. David Hay just knocked out Mark Demore, who got chinned in a round by another club fighter in Digger. An event? Yeah. Spectacle for casuals, great. And like I've said, I've said in the uh, live shows that all the casuals that come jumping out of you know, the bandwagon, David A's back, I told you, David's going to conquer the world. He's the next best thing to slice bread. And of course, people will forget about the Klitschko fight, that basically it was a left jab that shut David out all night long. And, he was if you, and if you go back and look at David Hay, it's that same... You know, over the top right hand he tried to throw against Klitschko, but against a good boxer who's got good speed, distance, and timing, and a good jab, he's able to hold uh, David Hay distance. David has to prove a few things. He's got to prove that that 17 extra, 17 pounds extra that he's carrying can go 12 rounds. He's got to prove that he's not going to tire, which he was tiring against Chisora. In that fight, the last fight he had, um, he was tired, he was blowing really hard, and he wasn't 17, he didn't have the extra 17 pounds on him. So we need to see David in a fight being pushed. We also need to see David, has he made technical adjustments? How does he do against a tall man who's got a good jab? How does he do? How does he get on the inside? Marius Vack, I think, would be a good opponent for David Hay because he's tall, he's got long range, and um, he's not that much of a challenge in the sense he takes a good shot, he's durable, he'll stick about. Povetkin couldn't knock him out. So it's a good fight for David for him to practice getting in and out. Uh, before we fight about, and talk about Anthony Joshua, let's see him fight against Marius Vack and see what he does against Vack. I even suggested uh, Shannon Briggs because Shannon Briggs has got a good chin. Shannon Briggs can punch. Shannon Briggs can sell the fight. And I mean, if Shannon Briggs is good enough to fight Deontay Wilder, then he's good enough to fight David Hay. But, you know, a lot of people say, well, Shannon Briggs is an old man. And Shannon Briggs is that. Shannon Briggs would have done better than Demore. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. Shannon Briggs. David Hay couldn't walk into Shannon Briggs that way. Because he knows he would have got chinned. Because Briggs has got fast hands. And he can punch. And he's the king of the one rounders. So 
that would be a great fight for as long as it lasts. If you're looking at warm-up fights. But um, the one thing I will say is if Anthony Joshua leaves himself open as the way he left himself open against Dillian White, against a speedster like David Hay, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. I'm not saying he beats Anthony Joshua, but I'm saying if he connects like he connected, like uh, Dillian White connected on Anthony Joshua, if David Hay, who's a world-class finisher and puncher, if he lands on Joshua, the fight is over. And Eddie Hearn can kiss goodbye to his cash cow, if that's the case, if that fight happens. But let's not move to that point yet. What did I notice was good? David Hay now seems to have really well and truly done with the Adam Booth era. We didn't see David Hay uh, taking a fight from the outside. We actually saw him bring the fight to Mark Demore, you know, behind a, you know, a pouring left jab. The, de the left jab of David Hay has never been great. Um, just a pouring, le prodding left jab. And then the big right hand over the top. So that was good to see. David on the front foot rather than David on the back foot. Whether he'll do that against an Anthony Joshua or a guy that wants to hit him back. And a guy who's genuinely going to hit him back. I don't know. Whether he'll be effective enough to get into positions with that extra 17 pounds. You know, when you're fighting a guy who's got a good jab. And I hear people saying, oh, he'll beat Tyson Fury. He's going to actually land on Tyson Fury. He's going to actually get into Tyson Fury. And Vladimir Klitschko is far more superior a boxer than uh, David Hay. Fundamentally, a better boxer, a better jab, better footwork, better all-round uh, boxer than David Hay. Let's get this straight here. And uh, Vladimir Klitschko used distance and timing on Hay and kept him at distance. There's no reason why Fury cannot replicate that. Um, and, and for me, I think he's capable of doing that. Very capable of doing that. So, um, and Fury's not going to stand around and let David hit him on the chin. So, David's going to have to work his way in to land shots. That's the thing. David's going to have to work his way in. Is he going to be able to work his way in um, with that extra 17 pounds? With that extra 17 pounds, he's slower, which means it might be more difficult for him to get in close in range. So, I think it's an interest. I think they're all interesting fights. But let's remember tonight. Congratulations, David Hay, on your comeback. It was a club fighter. You fought. Mark Demore got chinned in around by somebody that we really don't know. You've shown us that you can still punch. You've shown us that you're bigger. You look like a heavyweight now as a part to a cruiserweight. The Adam Booth era is over. The Shane McGuigan era has begun. Um, and you know how to entertain by the music and everything. Great. And the remix of... Ain't no stopping us now. Great. Fantastic. You're back. Let's see you back in the ring soon. And one more thing. I talked about David Hay being on YouTube. People laughed at me and tried to mock that. Even David himself did an interview. Yeah, maybe one day I'll be on YouTube. Funny. It was being streamed on YouTube tonight. So again, Mark Demore didn't stick to what he said. David Hay, as usual, says one thing and does something totally different. And um, David Hay fans, you know... I haven't slagged David off. I've just said it as it is. Let's just see who he fights next. Um, you know, people have say mentioned Bermain Stavern, Brian Jennings. Um, I still think uh, a fight with Pulev for a fight against, um, you know, even Pulev would be a good fight as well. People mentioned Dillian White. I can't see a Dillian White fight happening. I can't see a re rematch with Derek Chisora. Um, Huey Fury would be a good fight. I tell you, that'd be a good fight. Huey Fury versus David Hay. David would want no part of that at this point in time either. So um, David Hay is very good at picking his, and selecting his opponents. You know, he doesn't want to fight the best. He just wants to fight the guy that's either going to make him the most amount of money or the guy that's going to allow him to become champion again. Um, he'll look for the easy route to get there, that's for sure. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.